So thank you, Brendan, for attending Canal Recipes. We are very proud to get you as a speaker for this edition. Um, so the idea of this video is helping people better understand who you are, what's your history, uh, how you went into the Linux, uh, the Linux world. So my first question is, uh, what was your first step towards the Linux kernel and then your activity around uh, the performance? Well, I've done a lot of things. And I started off by doing system administration. Then I was doing security work. And the more things I did, the deeper I got into the kernel. I ended up doing performance work because I really liked studying the performance of systems. And open source has helped a lot because I can read the source code and really see how things are going on. But uh, back 10, 15 years ago, this was for, I was mostly doing Solaris with some Linux. And it was only three and a half years ago that I accepted a job at Netflix. And at Netflix, I was working on primarily Linux first time. So in some ways, I, I still feel like a Linux newbie. I've only been doing Linux seriously for three and a half years. But I have, I have a background in doing kernel analysis and using performance analysis, tool, analysis tools. And something that has really helped me make the switch is that for many years, I studied performance analysis methodologies. And so I came up with the use method and various other methodologies. And they've translated very well to Linux. And so I was able to really hit the ground running. And it's, it's been fun so far. In, in the last three years, Linux has come a long way. So when I started, I was interested in doing PMC analysis and doing advanced tracing analysis. And nowadays, we have eBPF. And I can, I can do a lot of things. I can port over a lot of my old DTrace Toolkit tools, which I originally wrote for Solaris. And I've now been porting them to Linux. And so um, I'm having a lot of fun. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long story. But I started with other operating systems. In fact, when I, when I, one of my first technical jobs was a Fortran 77 programmer on VAX VMS. And then I went to being a Solaris administrator. And so now Linux. And so now I'm doing Linux a lot. But um, it's, it's, it's fun. It's great to attend events like this. And, uh Today you are pretty famous for all you, the stuff you are doing, which is very interesting about the firm graph. About uh, you are also famous for shutting on disk and all this stuff. So uh, for many people, and it's also part of the idea of kernel recipes, is just to prove or that maybe make you laugh. But kernel developers are just human beings. <laughs> it's it's a starting point for us. And what could be your advice or your hints for the newcomers not being afraid of joining the effort, maybe working with you on some topics? You know, breaking the heist between what seems to be uh, talented people and how can daily users can be on this track and try to join them and make the product better and not being scared about uh, meeting these people. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess when I switched to Linux, one of the biggest advantages I had was that I had done kernel engineering before and I had done kernel changes. And I had the confidence to talk to other kernel engineers. And that's part of how I've been able to get up to speed so quickly in Linux was that I already wasn't afraid. I was not intimidated. Yeah. I'm certainly not intimidated by kernel crashes or getting into the weeds, because I've done that before. But for newcomers, I mean, something that to get to that point where you have that confidence, I think something that helps is that a lot of people, we treat this as a job, and it's our profession. and if you talk to maintainers, like Linux maintainers can seem very, very smart and intimidating, and they can give very terse feedback. But if you try and if if you understand that they're a professional and they they're doing the role they best the best they can, you can kind of understand where they're coming from, and it helps the context for interpreting that. And so they're being terse because they, they have to resp respond to a lot of emails every day. Uh, it's generally not personal. They, they want to have the best code integrated into Linux. And so uh, I, I think if you try to see it from their point of view, and, and what you can do on LKML is if, if you're looking at contributing a patch to a certain area, and I did this myself, is you follow the maintainer and you read all the emails that they send every day and do that for a week. And then you realize they're pretty busy. And the sort of terse feedback that they will end up giving to you, they've just given to seven other people. 
And so if you don't go through this exercise and if you just send your patch and a maintainer says, oh, this is terrible, you need to fix this and that, you might think that that's personal and you might get upset. But if you read all the emails they send for a week up until that point, you'll see they just said, sent this to seven other people. Like you're not alone. It's not, it's not personal. It's just them doing their job that they need to get done. And so absolutely, it's, it's, it can be very intimidating, but we're all professionals and we all have a job. Part of my job is to be a Linux performance expert. In fact, a, a, a real turning point was at a conference uh, for scale a few years ago, uh, it, was, it was four years ago now, where I decided that I would be a Linux performance expert. And so I gave a talk on Linux performance tools and I draw this great diagram of like where all the tools and where they fit together. And I treat it as, as in, in some ways as, as a job. I'm gonna, this is a job, I'm gonna choose to do it, I'm gonna choose to be an expert and I'm gonna be really good at it. And that's my opinion of what I'm doing. If, if you come to me and you think, Brennan, you're a god, you're born so smart, it, I, can, it's, I can understand being intimidated and that's not really how I do these things. For me, it's, it's deliberate. I'm going, to be, I'm going to develop expertise here, I'm going to develop expertise there, I'm going to work hard to do it. And, and I think anyone could work hard to do it if you chose to do it like I did. So I think anyone could say, I want to be an expert in this field, and they just work at it and, and they get there. So you're right, we're like everyone else. Like We just have chosen professions that we're, that we're working towards. Okay. Thank you. And can you share with us, uh, to complete this interview, what are your current topic or the future work, your next challenges uh, that, you are, you have, that you have in mind for personal or professional speaking? Um, for prof you mean professional work or professional speaking? Uh, work, sorry. So work, yeah. Um, my, well, some of the things I'm working on next is I'm getting deeper into performance monitoring counters because I'm seeing bottlenecks, I mean, this is quite well known in the industry, but bottlenecks are moving from the from software to more CPU buses and memory stall cycles. It's because CPUs are getting faster and we're adding more, well, CPUs aren't getting that much faster, but we're adding more cores. So we're scaling up CPU capacity, but we're not scaling up memory capacity. Yeah. And so using PMCs to really understand what's happening when we're, we're oversubscribing our, our memory buses and memory throughput. So I'm doing a lot of that. I'm doing more flame graph work. I'm getting automated flame graphs happening at Netflix so that developers can get a flame graph for each software build that they do and do uh, regression analysis between them. But also want to get more into, I mean, there's still a lot more into Linux that I need to explore and properly understand. I've given a lot of talks on performance observability, but it's, I haven't given many talks on tuning. And so what tunables you can turn on, because there's a lot of settings inside Linux. And so that's something I'm, I'm more getting into and investigating and people will probably see more uh, material I'll publish in the future on tuning Linux as well. Okay. So maybe it's a topic for the next edition of Kernel Recipes. <laughs> it would be that's fantastic. Right. Um, really, thank you for being uh, with us at this edition. It was very nice to meet you, to see your work and to have the chance to meet you in France and in Europe because uh, we know that it's difficult for uh, the professional speakers to be, uh, professional workers, sorry, uh, to be everywhere. So we receive this as a gift and uh, thank you very much. And maybe see you uh, on the next edition. That's right, thanks Owen. Thank you.